Let's have to shut that. All right. Hold on. We are recording, big dog. We're we're rolling. We're rolling. We're rolling. Uh, we're rolling buddy. So let me tell you about. Okay, you just got up, and you have a uh, 2014 NCAA tournament chair you're sitting in, right? Oh yeah. Right. You didn't realize it, did you? That's right. <laughs> a chair you guys you coached in. What's your yeah. first year at Notre Dame College, Sonny? Uh, I believe 11 12 season. It was the first year of uh, Division II. The first year we went into Division II. From NAI, because they transitioned, right? Yes. Okay. So 11 12 season. Um, yeah, 11 and 12. Are when you Joey Davis first came in? I, that's when I came in. Okay, are you ready for a quick trivia question? I guess so. Let's do it. Who's the last team to win NAIA Wrestling National Championships not named Grandview? Notre Dame. <laughs> you realize that? Dude, that's crazy. They are they're pretty good, dude. They're they're they like are. you guys. They're like you guys that like they get the talent like you guys get. Yeah, they do a great job, you know. Uh, you know that Iowa feeding over there is, is phenomenal, right? Yeah. And uh, I think that coach um, does a great job. Coach I Mitchell. Mean, yeah, he's doing a good job. I mean, you can tell the the coaches that run great programs, you know, and you can just see at the tournaments if you know national duels things like that, how his guys around him carry him right and uh, you know uh, the respect is there you know he's doing something good he's doing something really good uh he's doing something that i think nobody else has done is that right yeah I, yeah i, don't, I mean they're they're killing it dude I, I, as far as naia that's the last time they didn't win i don't, I don't even know if they, that's so crazy i know it's so it's crazy. crazy because you you've been in D two for a decade. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I've been at Notre Dame eight years now, and yeah, just under a decade, right? Yeah. And, and you know, you saw it like you saw the meteor meteoric rise, right? Like you guys, you get in D two, and and within two years you win it. Yeah. Two years, well, three calendar years, but like within two seasons, you guys are the champs of Division two NCA. That that's amazing. Like, and and the recruiting classes, and I think you know, like if you just look at like the old school recruiting, Anthony Ralph, obviously, Tom Ryan mm -hmm. didn't pick his name out of a hat, and I know you and Anthony are pretty close, right? Yeah, for sure, real close. It, it, the recruiting and what you guys have done with the job recruiting and and, and putting the the team on the mat, I, it, just, it amazes me every year, Sonny. Yeah, it's uh, you know from the inside, uh, you know you got to have the people on the inside to make anything work, anything. Right. So I think that's where Notre Dame's lucky. And, you know, I'm lucky in the program and everybody that's came through the program, like Anthony Ralph and, you know, any of those guys, uh, coach Romano, uh, you know, to deal with, you know, all of us, Zeb and, and to deal with all of us, <laughs> you gotta be a special program, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but Northeast so that, does, you know, you're in, you're in, you know, you're a Northeast Ohio guy. You're a uh, North Canton. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you, you were a Hoover Viking as a freshman, right? Right. And Dolph, yep. Brian Dolph's a Hoover Viking. And what's crazy to me is two of the all-time greatest guys to wrestle for North Canton Hoover never won state there. Correct. Isn't that wild? Right. Yeah, I know. Were you uh, a freshman? Yeah, I was a runner-up as a freshman, and I believe uh, Brian took third his senior year. Yeah, I think, yeah, Brian right. was third, baby, once, right? Yeah. So crazy. So, yeah, you know, that just – you know, North Canton uh, was a great place as well. I grew up there, and um, the coach, Walt Talarczyk, is the, is the guru that, you know, made North Canton wrestling. So, you know, he – taught me my foundation and then I'm sure if you talk to you know Brian he would probably tell you the same thing uh I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you know Walt Larchick 
you know, I, I was thinking of something the other day, <laughs> and it always has, like, rumbled through my head since he told me. I was a freshman in high school there, and Walter Flarstrick, Mr. T, we called him. You know, he told me, he's like, Sonny, you know, you're – take this in a good way, but you're – I, you're going to be a wrestling bum. And right off the bat, I'm like, wrestling bum? Like, you call me a bum coach? And it was it was far from that. You know, it was totally far from that. His point was, you know, I can see you love the sport of wrestling so much that, you know, I mean, I wrestled a couple of days ago. Um, and I know what he meant by it. I am a wrestling bum and I'll be one the rest of my life as far as wrestling wise. Um, um, you know, I love to wrestle. I love the sport. And I think he just meant like, I'm sure you'll live and die by this sport uh, is what he meant. And, you know, I think the true love of the sport. So yeah, he taught, he taught a lot, a lot. My entire foundation was built around Mr. T at North Canton. So here's what's crazy about just I gotta point this out to you. What what made I gotta to me what made Sonny Marchetti not a wrestling bum? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's funny. We call uh, I got a friend. He we call people who like never get away from the sport and never really they don't have like official capacities and they're just always around. We call them right. we call them wrestling hobos. Oh okay. Um, and what makes you not a wrestling hobo to me? Dude, like, you inspired me. Two years ago, three years ago, whenever it was, you really inspired me. And probably yeah. the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. As, yeah. as a father, as a coach, as an athlete, whatever, as a mentor to kids. You, went, you got a degree at, like, 39 years old. And had a, another child and moved into a house that same year. That was a, that was that, that brought me. <laughs> that, that, dude, that, that was is that the hardest thing you've done yes you know i think for me hardest thing i've done that i've completed maybe that's uh, a better way to put it uh that's probably the hardest thing that i've done it is the hardest thing i've done that i've completed um in that year uh it, you know i almost wrestled zeb i almost i was full time so it wasn't like I was taking one class. I, I had four classes. You were a my, 12 hour, 12 credit hour student. My senior year, which was two years ago, uh, my last semester, uh, actually not the last semester, the entire last year, I was full time. I was four classes, 12 credits, and uh, we actually looked into me competing. Could you have? I know that Contos did a couple years ago. Contos did at Dubuque a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. So the only re we looked into it, I got, I was even, um, I got a physical. I did the uh, uh, testing and, and everything. So uh, the only reason why I wasn't able is because I'm a paid full-time staff member at the institution. So you couldn't do it. Your family, you would have had to like get your job cut. You'd have to do a bunch, and then your fringe benefit. Do they do fringe benefits? Does your school count as a fringe benefit? Yeah. Okay. So like, then you'd have to pay for school, or they'd have to get a scholarship. It had gone. Yep. It would have been a logistical mess. It wouldn't have made any sense for you. Correct. So the only uh, reason why I was going to do it, I was just going to do it for one match. I would never have taken a spot from one of my own guys either. You know, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have done that. Um, you know, at the time I was 39, 40. So, um, you know, the, I would have tried to Mike Tyson it, right? <laughs> Come back for one last <laughs> exhibition. That's all I want. That's all I want. He's only I got gonna, one left like, in the tank. He's only going to pay like 50 or $100 million to come back and do that one fight, right? I'd do it for free. <laughs> that's the thing. Oh, you guys just love it, man. You love it. That's, a, that's what I love about it is that, that you love it so much. I mean, dude, you're so passionate about it. I've come to the practices, and yep. I've come to practice in the last four or five years, and 
you're still doing the whole practice. You're doing all the drilling. You're doing all the live and you're coaching. And I, do you still do that much now as a head coach? No, no, I can't. Uh, plus I got two guys, you know, that are, they're young, uh, with Corey Stainbrook and Nate Skenesny that coach, uh, right along with me. And, you know, those guys are the young bucks, uh, that work every day and, um, and wrestle and drill and kind of do the same format that I was doing. Um, no, I got to do that on my own now. You know, I, I, I've moved, I think, to the, uh, to the next stage of, of wrestling, working out, which is hitting a heavy bag and, you know, doing it on my own time. That way, you know, things as a head coach for me are a lot, you know, different, you know, scheduling practices and, and running it and, and uh, things like that. So that the head coaching position, I love uh, because I've been able to change what I do, you know, in, in a diff, in an easier format, kind of. So he calls you a wrestling bum. You're 14 or 15 years old. This guy calls you a wrestling bum. Talarchuk calls you a wrestling bum. Did you ever mm -hmm. see yourself as a head coach at an NCAA D2 program? Is that ever even a thought that crossed your mind, Sonny? Uh, that's a tough question. Uh, no. No, it didn't. Uh, you know, if you asked me then, I was planning on being Olympic champion, world champ, and a whole, whole bit. Um, just like all the other, you know, top young kids out there. So, no, I wasn't uh, – I didn't really think uh, – you know, I knew I'd wrestle. I knew I'd compete um, my whole life, you know. So, you know, that's what I love to do. I get up, work out. That's what I did this morning. So I was a little bit late. <laughs> uh, getting up, hitting the bag, and, you know, boxing and – and stuff like that's been a big part of my life uh, of training. So, yeah, you know, I, I've tried to alternate all my workouts. Now I'm in the, you know, scooters and skateboard and um, bikes and things like that because of my little guy. Uh, but, yeah, I've always been into other stuff as well. I played tennis. Um, actually, in, when I was in ju junior college, I was on the uh, golf team the week after I won the national title. Are you serious? In Chico. Yeah, I, I, I was in Chico, uh, California, uh, on the golf links. NorCal, as they like to call it. Beautiful NorCal, Dude, too. NorCal. Is Dude. That. And what I don't it know, is. They, call, they call the Bay Area and they call Sacramento NorCal. To me, that's not really NorCal because I do a lot of traveling in California. NorCal yeah. to me is like weed. It's uh, cheap. Trumbull hum or Humble. Humble. Um, we did the King Range out there. We, my wife and I did like a Pacific Coast on the King Range. We did like a 26-mile hike there. Uh, White Thorn, Fort Bragg. Uh, NorCal to me is like – Like Truckee? Yeah, Truckee. Um, Getting in Reno almost over yeah. there. There's truck yeah. is, is like Tahoe almost. Right. And, um, but yeah, we like took I, that every I don't consider that because you went to Lassen, right? You went to Lassen Junior College? Yeah, that's pretty north. That's uh, north. North. That's what I say. We always flew in Reno, Nevada, and then drove an hour and 15 minutes through Truckee and um, Donner Pass. That's Donner Pass. Donner Pass. Pass. Yeah. Yeah. Where All the way in. Where they took a shortcut, they got a seven feet of snow on them, and then they had to eat each other. That That's where. Yeah, yeah pass that every time. <laughs> George Donner and Tams and Donner. That, that is, I teach about that. We're actually. Really? Yeah, yeah. I taught about it a couple of weeks ago. I did a, a, a online lecture. We didn't wow. really get into it as much this year with it being online, but, like, when I'm in class and I can talk to the kids about it, when they rolled up on them, there was like a five-gallon, uh, like a stew pot with human blood when the, when the rescue party finally got to the Donner party. But that, that's where you went to junior college, right over there. Yeah, yeah. No, I know Donner's past. Right? Because truck is yeah, closer to Lassen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so yep. that's NorCal to me because, like, we go to Reno and Tahoe and we do vacation stuff there. And I've driven out west a couple times. 
I saw Cal so well. did a trip across the country. Um, my brother just did a trip out there with uh, with Hayden Brawny and Nick Mason. Just literally did a trip with my brother out there. Literally, yeah, they came back last Friday. <laughs> Why not? Why yeah, not? Oh, yeah, my brother ran a load of steel out to yeah. uh, to like uh, the Olympic Peninsula in Washington, and then yeah. they, they hit the uh, they hit the Redwoods. They hit the Pacific Coast 101. They did all the NorCal stuff. But they said everything was super weird because it was closed down. They went to the, the Redwoods. They, they slept a night in the Redwoods. The Brawny and Mason set a, a tent up on the side of a mountain. And my brother, he's a wimp. He slept in the Tahoe that they had. <laughs> and, but those, and then some lady was like, oh, are, you guys aren't walking around here, are you? And they're like, oh, no, we're good. We're, uh, no. Yeah, no, no, it's quarantine. We don't want anybody to get sick out here with nobody else in this hundreds of square miles of wilderness we don't want anybody to get sick yeah yeah i know right yeah We're oxygen and yeah yeah or just, uh, no people to make us sick. maybe the trees will make you sick i don't know but what was the, why okay first things first you got a wall shirt on all your assistant coaches are walsh you started mm -hmm. with North can hoover what, what was the move the walsh about let's let's hit rewind let's just rewind okay how'd you end up at walsh from from hoover yep um uh, Bottom line is I was at North Canton and then, uh, you know, Walter Larchick was a phenomenal coach. And then uh, what basically happened is uh, my dad passed away, right? So um, died my freshman year, had uh, pancreas cancer. Hold on, buddy. Uh, had pancreatic cancer and um, my coach, Walter Larchick, was at that time technically retiring uh to uh north carolina one second really hello hi yeah no it's all good the are gonna pop in here don't worry right oh, i know it's Game, the, it, well it's working at home right yeah <laughs> that's that, with kids and yeah um so yeah, no, I uh, and then Walter Larchick was going to uh, North Carolina, where his daughter is from, and um, so he was leaving uh, North Canton. So I'd probably only had him for a year anyway. And then uh, you know, with my dad, that happened. And how you know, old were you when your dad passed away? Fifteen. Yeah, I was fifteen. You know. <laughs> and uh, okay, so in that instance, in that year, dad passed away. Clarchick left. Did you had to feel like almost like um, like and, and and this was a part of his plan. He had a daughter down there, and, you know, and, and mm -hmm. can't always change your life for students and kids you coach. But you almost had to feel a little abandoned, man. Like it, it, that's tough. Yeah, it was tough. You know, it, it was super tough. It was so tough. And people probably make fun of me for this, but you know, I think that's where I got involved in boxing. Because I'm not kidding, I I wanted to so bad find where Mike Tyson lived in Ohio in Columbus, and knock on his freaking door and be like, "Hey, you need to come outside. We need to talk." Because I think I might be a little bit like you, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, his coach left, and um, you know, and and things like that. So it just, uh, yeah, it was tough. Uh, it was real tough, but uh, Bill Barger, Walsh Jesuit, they've been a family of mine my whole life as well. Uh, so North Akron is where I grew up wrestling. And, um, I mean, it was second nature just to go to Walsh. It really was. Um, so the, the transfer over was not tough at all, going from North Canada as a freshman to Walsh Jesuit because other friends, family, and and every and coaches that I had there as well. Um, so. Yeah, the transition was was easy on, uh, on that part. Um, and then I had really good friends right away, uh, lifelong friends, you know. Did you – you got – you didn't wrestle as a sophomore. Did you get hurt? Yeah, I wrestled. You did wrestle. What year did you – your junior year you got hurt? Mm -mm. What year did you mm -mm. not – you're a two-time – Actually, you to, uh, two-time. As a yeah. sophomore, I, I got hurt. The crazy part 
that most people probably don't know either what matter, but, um, you know, you asked about the freshman year and all that stuff that happened. So I believe it was, uh, you know, state tournament in March, right? Okay. State tournament in March. Um, and then after the state tournament, I take second there. My dad's really sick. And then, uh, then I'm training for the uh, cadet world team trials, right? Out in uh, Chicago, Chicago, right? Uh, in Chicago there. So at Northwestern. And uh, I would say, uh, so I wrestled there. I beat Adam Terrapelli. I beat uh, Griffin Powell, some pretty tough kids. And then uh, I have a guy named Kale Sanderson, uh, I believe in the finals. Oh yeah. So he beat me, uh, I think, well, I know he got uh, on top at the end, but I don't believe there was a takedown involved uh, at all. So I had him in the finals. Three then, and, Sonny? Was it a two out of three? Or just no. one? One. Okay. Uh, so wrestled him in the finals, and then, uh, you know, it, it, it was probably within minutes, if not already happened, that my dad actually did pass away. So when I was wrestling Kale, pretty much, you know, that's what was going on. So I lose to Kale uh, in the World Team Trials, uh, cadets, and uh, literally drive home right from there that night and uh you know before we pulled my house my coach had to call me or had to pull over you know he's driving me home and he can't pull in the driveway because there's you know a thousand cars because my dad passes you no know so. in chicago you don't find out until you get back to north canton yeah oh yep. my gosh so that's like that's eight ten hours after yeah. the fact whereas now with cell phones you'd know everything that's what like right. you kids realize today, like. Well, you know, it, the way I look at it, you know, it must've been so hard for, you know, my coach to tell me that, you know, now that I'm a coach on my side, I, you know, and that's probably why I'm pretty close with my guys, but I couldn't imagine having to tell, you know, a young kid that, that situation right before he, you know, pulls in his own door because there's all these cars. So I'm going to know pulling in. And so the decision he probably had to make where, hey, I probably, I don't know if I should be the one telling them or what, uh, but yet I can't have this young man walk in, a, in his own house and find out that way either. Who was the coach? Ms. Walt Talarczyk. It was, it was Walt. Mm -hmm. he, was, mm -hmm. he took you to Chicago. Mm -hmm. He was on his way out the door. That's probably May then, right? This guy's retired uh, and moved to North Carolina, right? I mean. Yeah, so no, that back then the uh, trials and all that was in April. Was April. So, but yeah, yeah. he's on his way out the door. He's retiring in a month, right? So my birthday is April 7th. So it was like all, all this happened on my 16th birthday. Jesus. <laughs> Literally my 16th birthday. Jesus. Um, Jesus. Lose. Lose the world trials, which was my lifelong goal, because a year before I lost to Eric Guerrero in the finals, and it broke my heart. I was so pissed. And then I trained like a madman uh, that next year to try and make the work, you know, cadet world team, and and then I lose to Kale in the finals. But you so know, the freshman in high school, you lost to Guerrero. The and the sophomore, you lost to Sanderson. Uh, Eighth, Eighth grader, grade, you lost to Guerrero. Ninth grader, you lost to Sanderson. Yeah. Why didn't you get to wrestle the one year at Walsh? I did. But you did. You won two state titles. Yeah. So, at the uh, state duels, sophomore year, state duels. It was at Wadsworth High School. We were wrestling Pickerington. Um, just it was just Pickerington then. It wasn't North and East or whatever then. It was just no, one. I, well, that's where what's his name went to school. He was really Brad good. Harris. Yeah, Brad and uh, not just Brad, but the other kid was really tough. I wrestled him. Um, he was like a two-time state champ. Anderson. For, 
Keaton Anderson. Keaton, it. you got it. Keaton. So I, I was wrestling one of them uh, and blew out my ACL in the middle of the match. That's what it was. Okay. Yep. I knew there was an injury. So your soft, that was your sophomore year or your junior year? That was my sophomore year. But I did finish the match, and I tech followed the kid. That was important to me. I'll never forget the doctor on the mat telling Bill Barger, he's done. He is done. Like, his knee is done. And then I think I flipped out on both Bill and the doctor and told him probably to uh, move nicely. And uh, I went back down and finished the match and got my tech fall. And then, uh, you know, after the match, my knee was humongous. So, yeah, that whole, you know, that whole stretch was, it was moving. That was uh, like a year within, from, that's like eight or ten, nine, nine months in between losing your dad and then you get this like horrific injury in your life. What's it like, Sonny, when you're like, and I know I, I had my, mm -hmm. my ACL as well. And, you know, I was a three sport athlete and it was tough. What was it like for you, man? Like being off your feet for two or three months. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I was off my feet for that long. I think I was off my feet for a month. I was a maniac uh, uh, back then. I would, I would have considered uh, having an ACE, you know, a torn ACL and you know I, I remember about a month and a half afterwards uh you know meeting with Clint Musser at Penn State and you know jumping off the quarry you know at Penn State the quarry there um it, it was sweet it, it was uh like beach MTV back there and I have this you know brace on my entire knee leg going from my hip to my ankle and Clint uh, you know, met up with some guys and, you know, they're at the quarry and, you know, it was just like beach MTV hanging out. Yeah. And so the next thing you know, Clint looks over and, uh, I'm at the top of the mountain type deal and in the air. <laughs> he's jumping. Like, yeah. And he, he's like, Oh my, you know, what is going on? I'm supposed to kind of watch you. Right. And then he looks over, I'm climbing up a rock, like a huge rock, Quarry Mountain type deal. And he was just like, oh my God. So after that, you know, I kind of, uh, you know, just took it off. I was wrestling within a couple, you know, months, but officially couldn't compete or anything like that. And then as a junior, when did you start wrestling uh, Billman? When, were, when did the rivalry start with Billman? Obviously, you had a bunch of rivalries, a bunch of really good guys. But the Jamar Billman rivalry with Sonny Marchetti is like the one that a lot of people think of as like the greatest Ohio PA rivalry, right? When did yeah. that start? Your junior year, your sophomore? When when did you guys start banging heads? Um, it was at a Christmas tournament uh, in I think Bethlehem, PA, and. It would probably, I think, my sophomore year, technically, I think the first time I wrestled him, it was at a dual Christmas holiday tournament. And I remember going through the lineup with the coaches and the wrestlers. And I believe Frank Favaro wrestled him the year before and might have beat him kind of gig or really close or somebody beat. So it was like, all right, you got Billman. And I didn't know who he was uh, at the time. And um, it was like, okay. You know, I'll go wrestle them and, and do my thing, and and they beat me. So it was like, okay, well, that's gonna, you know, that can't happen. <laughs> so I don't know. I, then I end up getting hurt, um, you know, later on in the season. But I don't think I came across him again until probably uh, Iron Man, my junior year, in the finals. So I wrestled him in the junior year or my junior year in the finals and, and beat him. So three, one or three, two or whatever the score was, beat him in the Ironman finals as a junior. And then we wrestle, you know, a couple of times in the freestyle in the summertime and, you know, uh, go back and forth and type deal. And then we, 
we go to battle for the next year, senior year, big year, who's number one in the country and, you know, back and forth, number one, number two. Um, and then we meet in the Ironman finals, which was a really big, you know, type deal. And he beat me uh, three to two, four to two, you know, by takedown uh, type deal. And then uh, that summer we wrestle at uh, Fargo in a semis for the junior national, you know, junior nationals. I beat them there and then made the finals and, and won Fargo and beat Carr um, in the finals. And then uh, wrestle freestyle back and forth, back and forth. And then um, wrestle my very last match in 2004 at the US Open. And my very last match was against Tim. So, um, yeah, me and him was came full circle. I think the cool thing was, you know, we were like two of the same kind of kids in a way. You know, I think that's what was pretty cool. There wasn't really, a, you know, an opposite. We were both badasses, fast, quick. We had, we, we like mirrored each other. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just a battle to see who is probably, you know, the best at that time. So I think that was pretty neat. And uh, inside, you know, me and Jamar talked a lot. You know, we were friends. <laughs> we loved it. And we would mess with each other. And, you know, after he beat me my senior year, you know, I sat down next to him and his dad at the Ironman, in the, you know, watching the finals. And I'm like, dude, what was that move? What did you do? So he did a, the patented slide by. He hit with a slide uh, by. Yeah, he hit me with a slide by back then. So, yeah, we, you know, we became really good friends uh, at that time and uh, trained together after that. And uh, so it was a pretty neat deal. You guys recently, were you at the – Iron Man for the anniversary of that match with him. Were you there? Yeah. And you guys talk. Yeah. What's he up to now? What's Jamar Billman do now? Well, he's the head coach for Easton. He's the head he's... coach at Easton now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Full, full yeah. circle for two freaking absolute maniacs. And he was a two time All American. Yeah. Was it once for Penn State, once for Lock Haven? Am I wrong there? It was either that or Colette. Right, <laughs> they're the same. Kind of I think he followed like a pretty similar path, actually. Yeah, I think he did. Like, I he was I, an American I, at least for Penn State once. I want to say, I, too. I could be wrong because when nationals were in Cleveland, was that 97 98? That would be 98. 98, he was a true freshman, dude. A true freshman, and he was like on a tear. I, I think, I don't know if he beat McGinnis or. Uh, he was doing some pretty good things back then. Yeah, he was a freak, dude. So, yeah. okay, let's let's talk about freaks. Let's talk about the junior college national championship picture that just recently showed up online. I yeah. sent it to you. It's it's um, it's it's you. It's Tony Davis. Uh, I think Claude Al Ruffin. I think I remember the Claude Al Ruffin guy. He was national champ then. Cormier, John Lester, McGee. What say it again? Johnny McGee. Johnny <laughs> McGee. <laughs> what a freak. Yeah. Uh, so so but like the big one, obviously the big stars now. Yeah. Yep, yep. Do one of the biggest stars on the planet, Brock Lesnar. Yeah. And then Daniel, I see Daniel on ESPN. He's calling all these he's calling all those ESPN fights right now. Yeah, all he those fights those know, quarantine fights. He's calling Daniel's calling all of them. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I seen him uh, in the cage there, and you know I try to follow uh, a lot of the UFC and stuff. And uh, he was at the Iron Man last year, and I was able to hang out with him a little bit. And Daniel, uh, cool. he's a cool guy. And he's a cool guy. He's a wrestler, right? Yeah, that cool guy. He's a wrestler that. Uh, you know, I think his personality, what makes him special is his personality stayed true to wrestler. You know, as obviously he's a badass, you know, fighter, one of yeah. the best of all time. Uh, but I think he, I think as a wrestler, he took the top-notch wrestling format mentality 
and he was a big representative for it anyway because he was on Olympic teams and yeah. you know things like that. So he was kind of our you know high end push. At, yeah, you know, he really uh, was. He really was. Yeah. And obviously, like you had Couture. Well, the mainstream, Coleman, the Randy main, Wren, right? Like, but now well, he kind of took the torch from those guys, and he evolved. Yeah. He evolved more than those guys did, I think. I think he's a better yeah, a better athlete than those guys. I don't know if he's tougher than those guys, but I think no, him, I, him and Stipe are better athletes than those guys, right? Yeah, you know, I don't. I mean, Mark Coleman and those cats, you know, from before were one of the top athletes, you know, on the planet. My brother said Mark Coleman was like a really good athlete. Yeah, any of those guys could, you know, do anything. They could probably yeah. even do standing backflips back in the day. Yeah, they're freaks. But I think Daniel's even a better athlete than those guys, and I think Stipe's a better athlete. Am yeah, I athlete? well, I, I think Cormier is uh, that wrestler, you know, that, that puts in the work. I don't know if he's a better athlete. As my definition of an athlete, that would be able to do like every other sport, do a backflip. Okay. Deepay goes and he can hit bombs out of freaking progressive field, Jacobs Field. Right? Deepay can probably dunk a basketball reverse. You know, he's yeah. a gigantic athletic guy. Whereas Dude. Daniel's shorter than I am. I know. He wasn't I, that I, much. Yeah. He's so, so powerful. But okay. Well, so, so wait yeah. a minute. Wait a minute. You guys were at the JUCOs. And then I want to talk – I want to talk – when those guys got to sell fights, like Daniel now is like kind of running his mouth at, at Stipe, but they're trying to sell fights. They're trying to sell fights, right? Yep. That's what they're doing. It's a business, right? That's all they're doing. It's a business. Like I don't yep. think there's any real ill will between those guys. Um, there might be. I don't know. But um, they're, sell, they're trying to sell fights. Yep. So, okay, junior college has changed a lot. Let's just get back to the junior college thing. Mm -hmm. um, who didn't win? T.J. Williams didn't win that year. In that, in, he was runner-up in that. So T.J. Williams is not on the on the, the the ten champions. He's not in there because he did, he was runner-up. Uh, he redshirted that year, but the year before that guy he was runner up. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, dude. That's crazy. crazy. I know. Yeah, okay. I mean, JUCO back in the day was I. I mean, I don't really. Mm, you know, I'm not in it like before, but from what I understand, you know, back in the day, uh, when I say that, when I wrestled in the late, early, mid 90s or early 2000, um, there was only one kind of JUCO league. And now it's kind of broken up into California JUCO. Yeah. And then yeah. maybe like the rest of the country JUCO. Yeah. I don't, so, last and have a team anymore? They do. I mean, I, I looked. They're just California. They just do the California junior college stuff. Yeah. You can only be yeah, that, you go to a JUCO in California. You can only be state champ. I believe so. Yeah, I think that's – no, I think that's what it is. And I yeah. think what they're trying to do with, like, North Idaho, they were trying to push them into some Washington league where mm -hmm. they would go to nationals. And then, obviously, Iowa Central is still really good. But, like, Neosho yep. – I think Neosho dropped and maybe brought back. It, yeah, it's, it's real weird. It's real weird. That's why it's hard to follow. You know, I, I looked at I'm so lucky, you know, being Juco back then. I mean, like you said, look at the guys on the poster, you know, how lucky um, back then. So, I and I remember our team, you know, our last in team when, you know, I was on it. And, you know, you had guys like TJ, uh, Reggie Wright, Shelton Benjamin. <laughs> Um, that was your team. <laughs> dude, that was your hey, team. <laughs> hold on. Uh, Jamil Kelly. Um, you know, I and I and it, dude, there was so many that came in there and, and it was unbelievable. You know, Rampage Jackson was on the team. Quentin Quentin Jackson was on your team? Yeah. Dude. Uh, Corey Hill, he was in the first Ultimate Fighter, like one of the first Ultimate Fighters, Corey Hill. I mean, there's, you name it. I mean, there's so many in there. But, and the funny thing is, I, I think I'm probably closer to them, you know, via older age Facebook type deal. And, you know, I, I 
chat with TJ and Reggie and, you know, those guys and stuff like that. I'm, I'm actually decent close to them, I would say, compared to, you know, some other people. I'd like to ask those guys. I'd like, I think you're the only one, like Jamil's a, a college coach, right? Like he, mm -hmm. Jamil's been at Stanford, Arizona State, a couple of different places, right? Obviously yep. he's a Olympic silver medalist. Um, but like, I'd like to ask those guys, hey guys, you know, Sonny Marchetti? Did any of you see Sonny Marchetti being a, a, an NCAA D2 head coach? I'd love, I'd love to just hear what they have to say because clearly, you know, dude, you had tunnel vision. You wanted to be an Olympic champion, world champion. You wanted to represent the United States. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, things come up, man. Life happens, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. you're, 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 mm -hmm. you're pulled in other different directions. Um, maybe yep. you start living the wrestling hobo lifestyle a little bit, right? Like, you know, you, you're running workouts here and there, and you're just mm -hmm. trying to make a living. Maybe you're doing a side job over here as a construction guy. I don't even, you know, I can't speak for you. But I think that's yep. what I see with a lot of these guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. what did you do for – what did you do from 04 to, to – you got the job at Notre Dame? That's a good question. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, I think I've always had pretty good self-awareness for myself as far as, like, long-term and where I'm at. Um, you know, even being what I would consider, you know, maybe in my 20s stuck in a position, you know, and just dealing with it. Um, I really always had a long vision of, you know, I'm gonna have a family and, um, you know, be successful in my own right. Uh, I didn't know, you know, where I'd go or what I would be doing, but, um, I knew I'd be involved in wrestling, uh, one way or another, cause you know, I think I'm pretty good at what I do, uh, and the people I'm with. So you know, what did I do? 2004, I did some mixed martial arts. You know, I did the UF, you know, not UFC, but uh, MMA for a little bit, coached. Uh, I was a head coach at Walsh Jesuit in 2004. So 2004 to 2006, I was Walsh Jesuit head coach right after Bill. Um, and that was fun. You know, that was awesome. Had really good experience. Uh, my coaches were Clint Musser and Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> you know, my brother, I mean, we had the, one of the best uh, high school coaching staffs around. Um, and that's where like Dave Rella, um, you know, was able to coach him and um, a lot of those guys. Mike so, Pasillo? Mike Pasillo? Oh, dude, Mike Pasillo. <laughs> Come on. I mean, that's, what I jumped, that's what I jumped into coaching, you know? And, so crazy. Uh, yeah, you know, I've done that. I've done... Uh, Painting, you know, the things that I've done, painted, woodwork, uh, all that, I'm so glad that I did it because, you know, that's what I love to do now in my spare time, you know. That's awesome. Now, yeah. now you do it as like a hobby. I love it. Now it's like I do. Like, yeah, I, I you it. know, make the house and, and now, you know, I love it. So I tried to all, I knew it was going to uh, all go down to my wrestling career or coaching, not wrestling, but coaching career in wrestling. And this is what I'm made to do. This is definitely what I'm made to do. And everything, you know, built around me, uh, it was involved in wrestling and, you know, all the sport a lot, but, you know, I wouldn't say wrestling is everything for me. Not, not at all. Well, now you got options, dude. Now, if you want to go do management, you mm -hmm. want to go do middle upper hand management. I and mean, obviously mm -hmm. you have strong leadership skills. You're driven. Mm -hmm. Now I think a lot of these places make you have a degree to get those jobs. Yes. And, and you forced, you willed yourself into getting degree as a full-time coach, full-time student, a father of two with a newborn uh, and a daughter. What's the age difference between the boy, boy and the girl? 10 years? Uh, my daughter's 11, almost 12. And my so son will be four. Yep. Yeah, it's seven, eight years apart. So it's like you got this gap between them and you're juggling all this stuff. You're driving pretty far. You're trying to buy a house. You're doing all this. I drive stuff. an hour. Yeah, yeah. man. It's just like, I don't know how people do it. And it's like, it, now it sounds like you're really uh, thankful for the experiences as doing the manual labor stuff, working with your hands. Now you can do it. And, and if in five years you're like, I don't want to coach wrestling anymore. My body hurts real bad. You got to yep. Got options. Well, and that's 
you know, I feel lucky in a way too, in in a in a a good position. I, I believe better than most. You know, as far as my perspective, is being a head coach. So I'm I'm 42 years old and I'm a brand new head coach. To me, I'm the most dangerous coach out in wrestling right now because the knowledge that I have being in the sport for 42 years is just vast. And then the excitement I have at being a new coach is dangerous. <laughs> it's super dangerous, right? Because I'm excited to be what doing what I do. I'm a new coach as far as like head coach, but my uh, my drive and everything. So you know, a lot of those a lot of coaches get their first start at you know late twenties, early thirties um, type deal, and you know you know guys my age like uh, Kale. Sanderson, you know, he's been coaching, I think, 12, 13, 14, maybe longer, right, as yeah. a head coach? Yeah, yeah, he was one in 04 as a competitor, and they brought him on as an assistant coach in 04, 05, right? Yeah, so. Yep. Yeah, you're right. So, and then he, he re-came back in 2011, right, to wrestle? But, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I mean, not him as far as a comparable, because obviously he's, you know, excited every year because he's doing his thing every year. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I'm 42 and I'm, I'm excited to be a head coach and, and do my job every day to where a lot of people, I think, have 42, 45 and coaching. You know, they're starting to get that. Eh, you're starting to see a little of the other side. Yeah. So I think a lot of guys slack off, you know, and um, I'm excited to get new ideas. You know, I, I pump for new ideas every day uh, as far as myself and my coaching staff. Dude, my thing is, like, I look at you, you're like a wild man, like a bucking Bronco Mustang who had to, like, get all this madness out of him, you know? <laughs> and then, and then it, like, you, would you agree? Like, you, you, I don't know if you were ready in your, in your mid-20s and early. I don't, I don't know if you were ready. I wasn't. You no, I wasn't. And fight and do all this other stuff, right? I, I, that's why yeah. I, just like you're, you know, you're like starting to calm down almost. Kind of. <laughs> they went and watched you wrestle. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you know, calm down is, I, I, I would agree with that as far as like, uh, um, you know, controlling myself maybe. Uh, but as far as like, you know, I, I, I just think I'm lucky. So lucky, you know, compared to you know, others, a lot of others, just because I do have good energy and, you know, I look around at my age and I'm like, man, you know, um, I mean, I got good energy because I, you know, I get up and train every day. You know, my discipline is pretty tough, uh, pretty good, uh, I would say. And, you know, I want to make champions, you know, and I think I do know how to make champions. And, and I think, uh, just doing what, what we do. Sonny, why, why did you not go the Frankie Edgar route, the Gray Maynard route? Why, why, why was that? You, you were in a, were you NAAFS? What, what, what were you fighting in? What league? NAAFS. You were in 